Welcome to Road to Cluj Napoca Junior Athlete Webinar. Very soon we will meet each other there, but let me welcome you in our first webinar to be held for our junior athletes. First, I would like to introduce the TC members. So let me share my screen. You cannot see them, but they are all here saying hello to all the junior athletes taking part in the webinar and in the competition. So let me introduce myself first. I'm Mrs. Noha Bushtabana, the Rhythmic Technical Committee TC President. And we have Mrs. Isabel Sowat, the first Vice President. Mrs. Maria Petrova, the second vice president, Mrs. Natalia Bolanova, Mrs. Marcia Aversani, Mrs. Marie Motobak, Mrs. Lubov Sharkashina. They are all TC members. And then you all know the athlete representative, Mrs. Sayana Vasileva. She's also going to speak to you. And our fixed sports manager is Sylvie Martinet and uh, Eunice Lebre who is leading the webinar with us uh, today. So the agenda of the uh, webinar is uh, we have with us uh, some topics and speakers who will speak to you about safeguarding and the 10 golden rules, some nutrition, it's very important for us as athletes, apparatus and leotards and what to pack in your uh, luggage based on experience from our athlete representative. And then if you have some Q&A questions and we will give you answers at the end of the webinar. So first let me introduce Alexandra Kuroi. She's the member of the Safeguarding Working Group. She's a rhythmic gymnast. And uh, she, we will start by her presentation. Hey guys, let's get started. So, who am I? My name is Alexandra Kiroi Bogaterova, and I'm the leading Australian rhythmic gymnast. I have competed in four world championships, and I'm an Australian champion for the last six years. One of the most notable achievements I have is winning gold silver and three times bronze medals across two Commonwealth Games in 2018 and 2022. I have participated at the 2022 World Games and Maccabea Games. I have also competed in 11 World Cups. Outside of gymnastics, I go to university where I study law, whilst also training seven hours per day. I really value the importance of education, no matter how many hours of gymnastics you do. Most importantly, I am part of the FIG Safeguarding Working Group, and I want to help promote fair and clean sport for everyone. We would like to tell you about safeguarding. So, what is safeguarding, you may ask? Safeguarding is the process of protecting all participants in gymnastics by providing a safe environment where all participants can interact healthily. It promotes sport participation free from harm and from inappropriate behaviour or misconduct of any kind. An important function of safeguarding is that it allows anonymous reporting without people knowing your identity. You can send anonymous reports to the Gymnastics Ethics Foundation, an organization whose main function is to manage gymnastics integrity issues. The word safeguarding in itself is self-explanatory. Safe stands for safety, safe environment, and safe space, and guarding stands for guarding or protecting all participants in sport. How safeguarding works in the FIG. There are three units that look at education and prevention. 
These units are 1. FIG Safeguarding Commission 2. FIG Safeguarding Working Group and 3. The FIG Safeguarding Unit Collectively, these three teams work on safeguarding principles. And then there is the Gymnastics Ethics Foundation, an independent body that handles the complaints and integrity cases. To explain further, the FIG Safeguarding Commission is a team of integrity experts from different gymnastics federations, selected by the president. And this team is where all action proposals take place before they are approved by the FIG Executive Committee. This team drives the initiatives within safeguarding as it is composed of integrity professionals. Next, the FIG Safeguarding Working Group is composed of active and former gymnasts from all disciplines, including myself, which many of you may know. We act as a consultative body and help to give athlete voice and athletes perspective on safeguarding. The Safeguarding Working Group is a very important part of the FIG as we act as a connection point between athletes and FIG. I am closer to the athletes by age, to you guys, so it is easier for me to understand the possible issues that you might be going through. Next is the FIG Safeguarding Unit, which is an operational body in the FIG office which coordinates and supports all FIG safeguarding activities. It carries the administrative function of the three safeguarding teams that I just discussed. Finally, the Gymnastics Ethics Foundation, also known as GEF. It is an independent body which handles the reported cases. GEF confidentially receives any report concerning non-accidental violence, harassment and or abuse. They are a group of world-class experts in sports law, governance and integrity. Next topic is education and preventative actions. For athletes, there is a new code of conduct that has been released and should be available on the FIG website. These are the set of rules designed to make events a safe space for all participants. Also, there are safeguarding officers present in all main FIG competitions that can assist you. As many of you have probably already seen there are big orange posters at all FIG competitions that show the 10 golden rules of gymnastics. For example, my favourite one is I pursue my own dreams, not someone else's. Also, did you know that the 10 golden rules of gymnastics has been translated into 34 languages? incredible. Lastly, there will be a webinar for gymnasts prior to Junior World Championships that will help with any questions you may have. Now, let's watch a video about the 10 golden rules of gymnastics and make a note for yourself which one sticks out to you the most. Here we go!
to wrap this up, I would like to wish you all good luck. Have a great competition, enjoy the experience, and most importantly, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. That was a wonderful presentation. I enjoyed it myself too. And my favorite quote was, I do gymnastics for fun. And I hope that everyone learned something and had their own quotes. But we are all proud of you. Whatever you are doing on the carpet, enjoy yourself. Now we would like to welcome Dr. Mariella Sirakova. She's a member of the FIG and Anti-Doping Medical and Mental Health Commission. And she will give you a lecture about a presentation about the nutrition. Hello, dear gymnast. I'm uh, Mariela Sirakova, member of the FIG Medical Commission. And uh, for me, it's the great pleasure uh, to be able to present to you the general principles of a good and healthy diet. I'm sure you know a lot about food, but a uh, refresher and maybe some new things uh, you don't know about food will be helpful for you. Importance of a balanced diet for an athlete. It is the performance, health, growth and development, body composition and recovery. It is a fact that health, beauty and a slim figure are highly dependent on nutrition and in sport nutrition is extremely important. General principle of nutrition is the food uh, we eat contain nutrients. Nutrients are substances required by the body to perform its basic functions. They must be obtained from our diet since the human body does not produce them. They provide energy, contribute to body structure and regulate chemical process in the body. There are six classes of nutrients required for the body to function and maintain overall health. And this is the water, carbohydrates, protein, fats, and fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals. Nutrients is two class, macronutrients and micronutrients. In the left you see the macronutrients, there are the carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. They are main source of energy for the body and we need in gram per day. And for the micronutrients, this is the essential to main health and we need mostly in the milligram or microgram per day. Macronutrient. Macronutrients are the nutritive components of food that the body needs for energy and to maintain the body structure and system. In this slide, uh, you see the different macronutrients uh, and also foods that contain carbohydrates and proteins and at the same time, such as lentils, beans and peas. You also see foods uh, that contain proteins uh, and lipids such as fatty fish, uh, eggs uh, and cheese. The best source of carbohydrates, you see this, uh, and uh, it is uh, very important to limit uh, these carbs that is uh, uh, in this picture. It is not absolutely necessary to deprive yourself uh, of pleasure of eating sweet desserts, but it should be not every day. The best source of proteins uh, uh, it's the lentils, beans, the soy products, the nuts, seeds, nut, whole grains uh, and animal products. And uh, it is good to avoid uh, the processed meats, uh, how the bacon, hot dog, lunch meats and other. The best source of fat, uh, it is the vegetable oils, fatty fish, uh, avocado, flax seeds, uh, chia seeds, olives, nuts, seeds, nuts, seeds, butters, and the other, and uh, avoid uh, the, the, this fat that uh, you see in the picture. Uh, the micronutrients uh, or vitamin and mineral are vital to healthy development, disease prevention, and well-being. They are needed by the body in very small amounts. However, their impact on a body's health are critical 
and deficiency in any of them can cause severe and even life-threatening conditions. They perform a range of functions, including enabling the body to produce enzymes, hormones and other substances need to normal growth and development. With the exception of vitamin D, micronutrients are not produced in the body and must be derived from the diet. This is why it is essential to eat a variety of foods. You can see the different vitamins and minerals and in which food you can find them. Uh, water and hydration are very important for a gymnast body. Despite training indoors, gymnasts need to maintain good hydration levels during training to prevent dehydration that can negatively impact performance. Well-timed use of sports drinks may be beneficial during long or hot sessions as they produce, uh, provide fluids and carbohydrates for the active muscles alone with electrolytes uh, for hydration. A general rule uh, for training is to consume a minimum two cups of fluids uh, two, three hours before training, uh, one cup uh, minimum uh, 30 minutes before training, uh, one cup uh, for every 15 minutes of exercise and at least ca four cups uh, for every kilogram loss during training. What does an ideal di diet for a gymnast look like? This is a high in hydrohydrates, moderate in protein, low in fats, rich in vitamins, mineral and nutrients. The amount in types of these nutrients will vary by energy needs, training schedule and whether the athlete's goal is weight or muscles gain, weight or body fat loss or simply weight maintenance and muscles recovery. Here we see the healthy eating plate uh, uh, that uh, it contains the healthy oils, the vegetable, the whole grains, the healthy protein and the fruits. And of course the water too. The meal frequency. In general, more frequent small meals or snacks will provide a more steady energy source that can enhance training performance, recovery and both weight loss or weight gain goals. It is best to have three meals a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, and two snacks, one between breakfast and lunch, and one between lunch and dinner. Eating late at night, it is not recommended. Snacks can be a good way of filling bo the body in between meals and training. Avoiding packaged snacks in favor of whole foods is a way best. The good ideas for the snacks are whole boiled eggs, uh, cheese and crackers, easy to make at home, ham or ham and salad sandwiches, uh, whole fruits, yogurts, tortilla wop uh, with salmon, avocado salad, uh, uh, high protein, low sugar muesli bars, smoothies, uh, from yogurts, fruits, uh, oats, uh, tuna on uh, crackers, uh, different nuts. Junk food, processed foods and eating out uh, are particular challenge to gymnasts because uh, dietary options, especially when traveling, are often limited. These types of food tend to be low in nutrient uh, while high in fats, free sugar and salts. While packaged foods will often have a nutrition label, many dining establishments will not have this information available. Nonetheless, uh, these foods should be completely restricted, allowing yourself a treat from time to time can help avoid an unhealthy relationship to food. Over restriction can sometimes be the cause of being eating disorders, which can be very damaging mentally. Eating pre-training competition. Before training or competition, it is best to have a light meal 
that is easy to digest to avoid gastrointestinal upset from fast movements and flips. A meal low in fat and high in carbohydrates for energy is ideal. Consume it uh, about two hours before warm up, uh, such as uh, a pie's, uh, piece of fruits uh, plus uh, 200 gram of low fat yogurts, uh, a bowl of breakfast uh, cereal uh, plus low fat milk. During uh, competition, how eat? Competitions often interrupt one or two main meals and extra carbohydrate intake is essential for replenishing stores. Yogurt, fruit bars, nuts and fruit are ideal snack for between routine to maintain energy levels and mental stamina. A sport drink and replenishing carbohydrates and fluid at the same time. Avoid high fat food uh, as uh, these are low to digest. Food and fluids uh, during competition need to be easy to consume as nerves can be difficult to handle during competitions. <laughs> Gymnasts should backpack uh, foods that they like uh, and that is uh, well in the stomach, like jam sandwiches or rocanet fruit. Be prepared, don't really uh, on what's available in the venue. Meat pies and sausages roll are not the best uh, fooling option. Eat post-training or post-competition. A recovery meal is uh, eating immediately after cooling down. This should be taken into consideration when planning the daily meals. For example, fruit smoothie with protein bar, yogurt, uh, add meal with uh, yogurt and berries, cottage cheese and sweet fruits, uh, protein shake uh, and banana, sport drinks uh, and raising bread uh, are all suitable recovery snacks that are easy to carry around. It is also important to include a lean protein source in recovery for muscle tissue repair and grow. After competing, a high carbohydrate snacks should be followed by a more substantial meal containing carbohydrates and protein. It is also a good time to encourage plenty of food. Weight management. It is term used for both healthy weight loss and weight gain. Gymnastics includes seven disciplines and each has its own challenges and problems with weight management. Some athletes require building of body mass, muscles and power, while others need strength and flexibility on a small frame. Daily or frequent weight measurement is not a reliable or accurate way to follow the athlete's energy balance or fitness. It is an especially stressful activity for the athletes and can encourage unhealthy eating behaviors and fluid management. Serial skin fault measurements for body fat and measurements of muscle strength and endurance uh, are the best way to monitoring uh, weight uh, and strength changes and should be done by a medical professional. The weight management plan should be developed with the guidance of a sports nutritionist of dietitian with assistance for the athletes from the athletes, parents, doctor and coach. How is relationship to food and body image? Low body fat levels are advantageous in gymnastics for flexibility, for agility, for dynamic power and technical. However, excessive dieting can lead to health and performance issues as well as eating disorders. It is important to cultivate a positive body image in your uh, self and to seek the guidance uh, of a sport dietitian of support and advice. It is vital to be mindful with the relationship you have with food and not to be obsessed uh, or underrate uh, and over-restrict yourself. 
can should be taken uh, to encourage a wide range of foods so that all nutrients needs uh, are met. Engaging the support of an accredited supports dietitian can be helpful for preventing and managing disorder eating behaviors. Take home message. Focus on eating whole foods and listen to your body. Don't deny yourself cravings from time to time. Too much restriction is not good. Be organized if traveling strength from school to training, pack snacks and water bottles to have before, during and after training. There is not good and bad food. There is less nutritional and more nutritional foods. Abundance of whole foods and moderation of less healthy foods is the key. If you experience disordered eating trouts, get professional help, speak to your health team. And uh, I um, most recommend you to have a varied diet. And this is the healthy food. I wish you an excellent performance in the competition and, of course, excellent health to each of you. Thank you for your attention. Hi again. Thank you, Dr. Sirakova. This was very, very interesting, even for me, not as a gymnast, but what are important to eat and uh, how to eat it and to drink a lot of water. This was very, very important. So thank you so much. Now we welcome the presentation of our athlete uh, representative, Siana. And at the end, uh, you have a motivation message from some friends who are going to give you some strength. For today, national identification on leotards, apparatuses, logos, and manufacturers, important information about reserve gymnasts, and what to put in your luggage. Let's start. You all know that we have special requirements for our leotards. But where can you find all the information? So first step is to go to the FIG official website. Click on the rules section as it is shown in the pictures. There will be section advertising. Then we search for the advertising rules competition clothing edition 2022. And here we can find the national identification. Please check carefully before going to competition if the requirements are met. What is important to know about our apparatuses? We need to be sure that the apparatuses are certified and logos are properly placed and visible. In our previous webinar, we have already discussed where you can view FIG certified apparatuses and today I would like to discuss with you exactly the logos themselves. Again, all the information we need is in the FIG website, but we must click on the section Apparatus Norms. We must go to page 85 in order to clearly see how and where the official logos should be placed and their sizes. I'm going to show you now some good examples, not perfect but still valid, and some not valid examples. Girls, please pay attention that if you have qualified as reserve gymnast, you must be in the competition hall during finals. You need to be ready at any moment to perform in the final in case of withdrawal of someone from participating in the competition. Please prepare everything you need, leotards, apparatuses, and etc. I would like to remind you that the reserve group gymnast must wear a leotard in order to remain in the field of play. 
Dear gymnasts, I remember my first competition abroad. I didn't know what exactly to put in my luggage and what to take with me on the flight. So, based on my travel experience now, here are my recommendations for you. Leotards, apparatuses, national tracksuit and stuff you need during training, I would recommend you to put in your hand luggage. But be careful that liquids such as shampoo, hairspray are not allowed in carry-on bags, so they must be given in checked luggage. Sometimes hoops or clubs may not be allowed on board depending on the airline, so don't be stressed if this happens. I wish you good luck and may you have the best experience possible. Please feel free to contact me anytime. Enjoy the competition! Hello girls, welcome again. I'm very happy and proud that you have reached that far with your trainings and efforts to the most important event for the Junior World Championships in Cluj. I would like to tell you that this event is the most challenging event for you. So embrace the new experience, take all the challenges and enjoy every moment. I've made some researches for you to help you to overcome your emotional fears and your emotional well-being. So let's take together how we can get better mood and be happy. Now let's watch together a video that you have received from the senior gymnasts around the world from different continents encouraging you. We're all proud of you. You can do it. Love you girls. Qızlar, sizi Azərbaycandan salamlayıram. Unutmayın ki, siz çox gözəl, güclü və cəsarətlisiniz. Əminəm ki, çoxlu məşk edib yaxşı hazırlaşmışsınız. İndi isə bacardığınızın ən yaxşısını göstərməyin vaxtıdır. Sizinlə qurur duyuram, siz bunu bacaracaqsınız. Olá, sou Bárbara Domingos, atleta do individual do Brasil. Estou aqui para desejar todo o pensamento positivo, toda a força no Campeonato Mundial Júnior. Deem o melhor de vocês, lutem até o fim e força. Beijo, boa sorte! Hi girls, we are Team Bulgaria and we want to wish you a good luck at your upcoming World Championship. Be brave and don't give up. Believe in yourself. Proud of you, you can do it. 大家好，我是来自中国的赵雅琴，预祝所有参加世界青少年锦标赛的运动员比赛顺利，取得好成绩。这个舞台属于你们，享受它，大胆展现自己，你是最棒的，期待你的表现，我为你们加油。Proud of you, you can do it. Dear junior gymnasts, we are Margarita Kamasu and Daniel Farnese. Four years ago, we participated in the first Junior World Championship in Moscow. Now it's your turn. Good luck. We, we are proud, proud of you. you. You can do it. Hey girls, it's a really great opportunity to compete in such a big event. You are very young and you have your whole career ahead of you, so enjoy every second of your road. I wish you a wonderful and a memorable competition. Proud of you. You can do it. Hi girls from Italy, I wish you good luck for this important competition, the second Junior World Championship. Enjoy the experience and have fun. Bye! Hello everyone, I am very happy to wish you good luck for this important competition, the second Junior World Championship. I participated to the first edition and it was for me an exciting experience. Full enjoy the competition. I am proud of you, you can do it! Дорогие девочки, я желаю вам огромной удачи на юниорском чемпионате мира. Верьте в себя, и у вас все получится. Я горжусь вами. Hola, soy Marina Malpica de México. Les deseo mucho éxito en su campeonato mundial juvenil. Disfrútenlo mucho. Hi everyone, I'm Havana Hotman from the New Zealand national team. I want to wish you all the best of luck for the Junior World Championships. I'm so proud of you and I know you can all do it. Dear participants of the Junior World Championship, I want to wish you great success in the coming start. I'm proud of you. You will do it. Good luck. Hi, 
My name is Vita Krishkanis. I'm Lily Mizuno, and we're Team USA. And together, we would like to wish you a lot of good luck and a smooth competition at the Junior World Championships. We're so proud of you. You got this! Don't be afraid of showing your skills and abilities. I know how this competition is important for you. I wish you go forward and never give up. Proud of you. You can do it. Am mai rămas puțin până la campionatul mondial de junioare, unde urmează să străluciți pe scena mondială a gimnasticii ritmici. Sper că acest eveniment să vă inspire să vă urmați visurile cu pasiune și determinare. Succes tuturor gimnasilor! Sunt mândră de voi! Știu că puteți! Now you can see that everybody is proud of you even before reaching the Junior World Championships. We are all proud of you. The whole TC is proud of you. Everyone, the senior gymnasts, because we appreciate everything you have done coming so far, just being there. Now, if you have any questions, you can type it in in the Q&A when hearing the presentations of Alex for the safeguarding and the 10 golden rules or Dr. Sirakuba or Siana's presentation. So if you have any questions, type it in in the Q&A and we will be happy to answer you. I hope, girls, that you have benefited from this small webinar. It's just to welcome you to the road to Cluj-Napoca. We are almost there. Maybe some questions are coming in. What kind of sports drinks are recommended? Sian, I think this is a question for you as an athlete representative. Maybe unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you, Noha. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, presentations. And thank you, girls, for being here with us today. Uh, what kind of sport drinks are recommended? I think that during the Dr. Sirakova's uh, presentation, it was very uh, good and clear uh, the explanation about what kind of drinks are recommended. And also, I would recommend you as an athlete representative to always ask your personal doctors and uh, to have advices from them. I would suggest the same thing. It's better always to ask your personal doctor your team doctor. Yeah. Any more questions coming in? The FIG sign is valid if it has only the writing like Chokot, Sasaki and no FIG circle. You mean the logos, right? Yeah. So Siana explained this well in her presentation. The idea of the logos is that we can see it, is that it is still there. But if it is completely erased, like if you see the example from Siana's presentation, she wrote not valid example, then we cannot validate it. But if there were some trace still there from the logo, from Sasaki, from Shakot, something that showed that there is a trace, we know it goes easily out. Uh, we will validate it. But if it's everything out, we cannot validate it. So Siana showed some good examples and some not valid examples. This presentation will also be online, so you can watch it one more time if you want. What is when some gymnasts are allergic to some food, then they don't eat it. It was only 
telling from Dr. Sirakova what to eat and what to eat, not to eat, what is high in carbohydrates, what or not. And the gymnasts know what they're allergic to and they don't eat it. So uh, they have to know what they're allergic to and not take it, of course. There are many other um, options, not only one option to, to eat. She gave multiple options in her presentations. Yes, all the videos will be again available to see. And uh, there was one more question. Is it okay if the under my own shows during my performance or will the gymnast get a penalty? It's written in the code of points that the gymnast under my own should not be shown under the leotard. So it shouldn't be shown. So you should enter the competition hall without having anything shown under your leotard. So it should be not bigger than your leotard, in other words. And also in a transparent material. Exactly. Thank you, Sienna. Sienna, this is a question for you. Our weights should be only in the hand luggage. Weights. Uh, no, exactly the opposite. They need to be in the um, suitcase. Yes, in the suitcase that you give for the check. Yes, the big suitcase weights are to be inside. Yes, they are not allowed in the board. Come on, girls, type your questions. We are there for you. It's your time now. We are happy to help you. Should I always have extra pair of everything just in case my luggage doesn't arrive? Um, <laughs> really, I would recommend you to do to do it because uh, in my experience, I had many times my luggage didn't arrive, and it was a stress for me. So I didn't want you to have the same stress. Maybe it is better to have a second pair of everything with you that you can take with you on the flight. Yes, but for example, your apparatus, your leotard, you don't need to have extra because as Sienna explained, you can put it in your hand, hand luggage. luggage. So it will be with you. you don't, it will add with you. Right. So you don't need to have everything extra from it. It's just night uh, sleeping gown if you want first in case your luggage doesn't arrive. So your first night sleep, you have something to sleep in. You can have two, of course. So one luggage, one in the um, suitcase. Yeah. How big the suitcase can be, Sienna? I think this is from the airlines. Yeah, yes, it depends <laughs> on the airline. It depends from the airlines. Are we allowed to use a candle for the two shoe? Oh. Sienna, you can answer this because you gave a presentation on this about the candles. Yes, about the candles. It was, yes, the previous uh, webinar that I explained very well about the candles that they're not allowed to do on the official uh, carpet. Uh, you can take with you, for example, a small piece of carpet and do it for your own uh, use only, not on the official carpet. And it's going to be the same for Cluj. Because it's dangerous for other gymnasts. For example, if you do the candle on one spot that you uh, use, for example, for the pivot or et cetera, but then the other gymnasts maybe can do a jump there and it's going to be dangerous for them. That is why it is not um allowed to do it on the official carpet if the fig tag on the ball is a little bit erased are we going to be qualified if it if it's a little bit erased the logo it's okay but it has to be visible that it was there not completely erased is it okay to use the apparatus if they have uh, uh, the old approvement no, they have to have the license number approved on the FIG website. They have to be valid. 
are we allowed to bring hairspray in our suitcase? Yes, in your travel suitcase, you can bring your shampoo, hairspray, whatever you want. In your hand luggage, you can only have up to 100 millimeters. So be careful what you put in your hand luggage. With you in the plane, up is up to 100 millimeters only. Come so, on, girls, if you have more questions, we are here for you. One more about the candle. We can use it, but not on the official carpet. Yes, that's true. On your piece of carpet, small one, but not on any carpet, official or not official, from the LOC. We cannot ruin the carpets for the organizers, and we cannot make the carpets dangerous for other gymnasts. So if you have a small carpet, like Sienna explained, a piece of cloth, piece of carpet, small one. You can put your candle, you can put your wax, you can put whatever you want on it, but not on any carpet, official or training. Can we wear earphones on the training competition carpet? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. You can for warming up. You want your music with you. Yes, you can, of course. Where can I find a little piece of carpet, Sian? Um, in uh, our gym, uh, we, did, we do it for ourselves. Uh, because we had one uh, big carpet, it's not for gymnastics, not the official floor. It was from one from home, and we took this uh, piece and we cut it for small pieces, and we give it to our gymnasts so they can bring with them during the competition and do their uh, the candle or whatever they want. Sometimes they want water. So my advice for you, you can use any type of carpet. Uh, it works. Is it okay to have many piercings during my big performance or even small bracelets? No, you're not allowed to have many piercings. You're only allowed one earring, small earring, not many piercings because piercings are not allowed. And small bracelets and jewelry and all of this are not allowed. So you are not allowed to have jewelry in general. Thank you for wonderful presentation. Could you please advise us what is the best way to manage the stress? I think its best way is to focus on what you're doing. Don't think on stress, release it and work on what you came for, on what the, why you are here. You're all here because you want to come, you enjoy the sport. And that's when I told you, I do gymnastics for fun. So enjoy every moment and gain the experience. You could see the message coming from uh, uh, Sofia Raffaelli. And she said that she was there as the first junior world championships. And then she became a world champion, senior. So she's enjoying every moment she's doing and she loved the experience. So enjoy the experience, release the stress. Maybe like I told you, read a book, uh, listen to your favorite music, write down three good things that you find in your day. And all of these can help you. Think positive. Can hair cones be placed on the head? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Maybe my English is not so good. What's hair cones, if you can explain me? I, I'll search it on Google and until maybe you can tell me if, if you know Sienna. 
No, I'm also trying to understand. I think it's about hairpins or something like that. The headpiece is very big. Would it be a problem? Everything um, for, for the head, it should stick around the, um, the head. It should not be big or it should not be placed around your head. Vesna, if you have a, a photo of the circles you're speaking about, because I cannot find it on the Google, I cannot, sorry, understand what you mean. So maybe you can uh, send us a photo and question about medication. What about medication? You should follow the medication with uh, your team doctor. You need to know what is possible, what is not possible. So uh, there are rules and your team doctor should know it. And uh, this you have to refer to the medication to the doctor. Am I allowed to wear a red thread on the wrist? The jewelry, I know that in some European countries they wear it. Uh, in Easter time, am I correct, Siana? Yes. Yes. Um, as long as long as it is not jeopardizing anything and it is under the leotard, it's okay to keep it. But if it is jeopardizing the your health in the in the competing order, it can fall down from you. So the next gymnast cannot compete properly behind you. So it's better to take it off. Ah, that's nice. What will the banquet on the final night of the competition be about? Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's all dancing, so you can be prepared for dancing, and I will dance with you for sure, so we will all be ready for that. Is there a penalization if you wear any kind of jewelry? Dangling jewelry, big jewelry, big pieces of jewelry, yes. Small, close to your ear? No. Will there be a theme for the banquet? No, we didn't go for the Okay, let's wrap it up. Are we allowed to wear slipper? Are the coaches allowed to sit with the gymnast on kiss and cry? Yes, they are allowed. Are we allowed to wear slipper? Earrings or just studs? What do you mean by slipper earrings? As long as they are close to your ears, they're okay. It's also participate in banquet even if the team won't stay in the official hotel. This is something that you need to ask the LOC, the local organizing committee. It's something related to the organization. Will there be a physio? I'm sure there are doctors and you can ask when you arrive. What kind of medicines are not allowed? So you need to check the anti-doping and this is you can learn from your team doctor what is allowed and what is not allowed for the anti-doping. So girls, it was so great to be with you. I'm so happy that you have such enthusiasm.
and to ask questions. And all the questions were really interesting and to know how you're thinking and what's interesting for you. And I hope you have benefited. My TC is very happy that you are here with us. They are all supporting you, wishing you all the best of luck. Siana, as an athlete representative, will be there with you all the time. If you need anything, you can approach her. She's going to be with you. She will contact us. I'm going to be there also with you all the time. All the team is available for you. We are there for you. You can do it. We're proud of you. Love you, girls. I wish you good luck. Have the best experience ever. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.